Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. In this particular video, I will be explaining you pyrimidine biosynthesis. I have my previous videos on purine biosynthesis, regulation of purine synthesis and regulation of pyrimidine synthesis. So the links for all these videos are available in the description below and also they are appearing at the end of this particular video. Now let me explain to you what, how pyrimidines are synthesized. Now the synthesis of pyrimidine nucleotides, it all begins from condensation of carbon dioxide with the glutamine and by consuming ATPs to do that. So this particular job, it will be done by an enzyme called carbamyl phosphate synthetase 2 enzyme. Now the carbamyl phosphate synthetase 2 enzyme, it is a cytoplasmic enzyme for that matter. All the pyrimidine biosynthesis that I have shown here, they are all cy cytoplasmic reaction. So the carbamyl phosphate synthetase 2 enzyme condenses carbon dioxide with glutamine, it consumes ATPs to make carbamyl phosphate. Now once you get carbamyl phosphate, so the carbamyl phosphate is going to condense with aspartate, amino acid aspartate is condensing with carbamyl phosphate. The job is done by aspartate transcarbamylase enzyme to give carbamyl aspartate. Now, what is the importance of the first enzyme and the second enzyme here? Now, the first enzyme is the most regulated enzyme in uh, pyrimidine biosynthesis. It is the highly regulated enzyme in pyrimidine biosynthesis that is carbamyl phosphate synthetase 2. Now, what is the importance of second enzyme? Aspartate transcarbamylase is considered as a committed step or the rate limiting step or the rate limiting enzyme in pyrimidine biosynthesis. So the regulated enzyme is carbamyl phosphate synthetase 2, rate limiting enzyme is aspartate transcarbamylase. What is the meaning of rate limiting enzyme? As you might be knowing, rate limiting step is the one which will determine whether or not pyrimidines are synthesized. Okay, so only when carbamyl aspartate is made then only you are going to get pyrimidines. Just by making carbamyl phosphate doesn't guarantee you that it is going to make uh, pyrimidines because carbamyl phosphate is also synthesized in urea cycle but it is in the mitochondria. That is why CPS1 is not a rate limiting step. It is the aspartate transcarbamylase uh, catalyzed reaction is a rate limiting step. Now, carbamyl phosphate condensing with aspartate to make to give you carbamyl aspartate. So by this time, so we have used carbon dioxide, we have used glutamine, and we have used aspartate. So if you take a look at the pyrimidine uh, nucleus or the pyrimidine ring, I have shown you the pyrimidine ring here. It has got six atoms, numbered one, two, three, four, five. So out of six atoms present in a pyrimidine ring, four atoms are donated by aspartate, as you can see here. Nitrogen 1, carbon 4, 5, 6 entirely donated by aspartate. Carbon 2 is given by carbon dioxide, this carbon dioxide here. Glutamine is going to give you, this glutamine going to give you nitrogen 3 in the pyrimidine ring. Anyway, so you got carbamyl aspartate. Carbamyl aspartate undergoes a reaction catalyzed by dihydroorotase enzyme to give you dihydroorotate. Now so far we have seen three enzymes that is Carbamyl phosphate synthetase 2, aspartate transcarbamylase and dihydroorotase. All these three enzymes, they are present in one big protein complex and that protein complex together, we call it as CAD trifunctional enzyme. CAD trifunctional enzyme complex. So this is what is, it contains uh, three enzymes, C, C for carbamyl phosphate synthetase 2, a for aspartate transcarbamylase and D for dihydroortase. All these three enzymes are together in pyrimidine biosynthesis. That is what is called a trifunctional enzyme. Anyway, so dihydroortase is going to undergo oxidation reduction reaction here done by dihydroortase dehydrogenase to give you orotate. Now this orotate, it is going to receive, this. that's a pyrimidine ring here. Orotate is a pyrimidine ring. So it is going to give, uh, receive uh, ribose and phosphate. Now the ribose phosphate donor, as you might be knowing in purine uh, nucleotide biosynthesis, it is the PRPP, phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate. This phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate, 
it is going to receive phosphate and ribose from prpp that's why orotate is converted to orotidylate monophosphate that is omp this is a pyrimidine nucleotide now this job is done by oprt enzyme that is orotate phosphoribosyl transferase enzyme oprt enzyme transfers ribose and phosphate to orotate and you get omp once you get omp omp will undergo decarboxylation reaction done by omp decarboxylase sometimes it is also called as orotidylate decarboxylase this orotidylate decarboxylase or omp decarboxylase that's where you get ump uridine monophosphate which is a true pyrimidine now uridine is a pyrimidine true pyrimidine ump you are going to get with the help of these two enzymes so oprt and omp decarboxylase they both these two enzymes are together in one protein complex and the name of that protein complex is ump synthase ump synthase is the name of the enzyme which is a complex enzyme uh, it is basically uh, two enzymes being together that is oprt and omp decarboxylase together we call it as ump synthase now with the help of ump synthase we made ump here once you get ump ump can be converted to udp by taking a phosphate from atp udp can be converted to utp by taking one more phosphate from atp and that utp is a pyrimidine nucleotide so uridine triphosphate it can go into rna synthesis ribonucleic acid synthesis so from utp you can make ctp that is cytidine triphosphate done by cytidine triphosphate synthase enzyme glutamine is the amino group donor you consume atp there once you make ctp ctp is ready for rna synthesis now we need a type of pyrimidine for dna that is thymidine but it has to be in deoxy form so uridine diphosphate will undergo reaction catalyzed by ribonucleotide reductase enzyme where udp is converted to deoxy udp so i have a video on ribonucleotide reductase enzyme function link for that video is there in the description below now dudp once you get it is going to be converted into dump by removal of phosphate deoxyridine monophosphate now the deoxyridine monophosphate is converted to deoxy thymidine monophosphate which to go into uh, dna synthesis because deoxy thymidine monophosphate this job is done by thymidylate synthase enzyme now this thymidylate synthase enzyme needs n5 n10 methylene tetrahydrofolate which is converted into dihydrofolate i have again a video on um, the more details on conversion of dump into tmp dtmp uh, methotrexate five fluoroacetyl all the mechanism i have a video link for that video is also there in the description below so that's how you get dump into tmp once you get dtmp so dtmp is converted to d tdp and dtp is converted to dttp and that dttp can go into dna formation deoxyribonucleic acid formation okay so this is this is what is a pyrimidine biosynthesis now if there is any mutation in a gene coding for ump synthase that will lead to accumulation of orotate because if ump synthase is down it means conversion of omp into ump or conversion of orotate into omp down that means there can be elevation of orotate and this orotate can come out into the uh, blood and then into the urine giving rise to orotic aciduria so ump synthase defect can give rise to orotic aciduria it can be defect in oprt or defect in omp decarboxylase so this is what is all about pyrimidine biosynthesis i hope this video has helped you so other links for related videos there in the description below you can take a look at those videos to understand more on pyrimidine and uh, pyrimidine synthesis and uh, regulation and the applied aspects thanks for watching and uh, see you in my next video if you have any question uh, put that question down in the description below if you have any feedback you are most welcome to put that feedback down there in the description below so thanks again and uh, see you in my next video